Hey guys, it's Dima from Dimos Tech, and today we are reviewing the Pixel 2 XL. Okay, so first of all, what you see here is not the blue tint, it's actually uh, a blue solid wallpaper. Now, while I'm in it, I want to actually go a moment to the yellow, and obviously I won't be able to show you that on the camera, but let's try to close up as best as we can. That's pretty much the most what I can. Now, what I'm looking at is a solid yellow screen, and on that solid yellow screen, if you look closely, you will not see any burn in. You will not see any burn in, I repeat, uh, because there is none, at least for me. Now, actually, if I'll go ahead to my Nexus 6P, and I will try to show you that as well, on the old Nexus 6P, sorry, on the old Nexus 6P, if we look very closely, now, I'm, I don't think that the camera will be able to focus that well on that. Yeah, maybe we will, you know what, I'll turn off the light for once. And maybe... Okay, I think you cannot see that. But basically there is a burn in on my Nexus 6P. So, I just want to, uh, first of all, describe what's going on. There is a burn-in, there should be a burn-in on almost any OLED screen. Uh, almost, not everyone, and don't fear that. I mean, it happens very rarely, and after a very long time. There have been rumors, obviously, that uh, the Pixel 2 XL had its burn-in after, I don't know, about 72 hours. Not mine. Mine is fine, uh, from that perspective. Now, regarding the blue tint, so let's scroll on to a white color. So this is pure white. Now, uh, you should see it as pure white. And let me try to, I don't know, to move. Uh, there is, there is a blue tint. There is. Uh, I won't lie, there is. But it's totally fine for me. I don't know, I, I don't see it most of the time. Maybe sometimes on the sunlight, where the phone is next to me while I'm eating or something. So, I see it a little. Nothing too, too much. Now, there was another rumor that I heard that uh, on the edges, you have no touch. I don't know, for me it works. Uh, at least from my experience. Well, obviously there's nothing to press here, but as you can see, it does work. Uh, it works on the edges, I don't know. I've seen it happening on one game, actually, uh, that I couldn't press for some reason, but I think that game wasn't uh, prepared for the, for the new ratio. It was on the 16.9 ratio, not for the 18.9. Uh, so, I don't believe uh, that's the thing. Now, regarding the black smear, you know, if you have something black, I don't have something to show, but if you have something uh, black and you move pretty fast, uh, that you see some sort of blurriness on the black. It takes time till the pixels uh, off the screen turn uh, to black and the opposite. I did see it once if I actually scrolled very, very, very fast. I see some. I can say that it's too much important. Uh, so that's not an issue as well. Now, uh, there were some rumors about flickering screen. Uh, actually, those are not rumors. I know a person that already have it. But um, for me, it's not an issue as well. So the screen flickers uh, while the phone goes to uh, always on display. To be honest, uh, I actually turned off the always on display because I pretty much hate it. It's not that I hate it, but I prefer to consume less battery, especially at night. I don't want to see the clock or whatever, only if I pick up my device and for that you have the uh, ambient display, it's good enough for me. Now I want to talk about the charging of the device. So uh, the battery, first of all, is very good, at least for me. Uh, I don't know, I charge it occasionally, I don't really charge it, uh, uh, you know, it's not very important to me when I charge it. Don't leave the phone charging at night, that's for sure. I don't like that idea, uh, that something is charging next to my uh, head. But one thing that people noticed, and I think I can confirm it, I'm not really sure, is that while the screen is on, the charging goes very, 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 very slow. 
I think it does. I'm not really sure, but again, it's not too much. Uh, and if you use the original charger of the phone, it actually charges pretty fast. Actually, charges pretty amazing. Now, the charger, the original charger, let me take it for a moment. Uh, this is the original charger, just a white one. I hate that it's white, seriously. I'm not really sure that I will be able... Where are the specs? Oh yeah, specs on the bottom, actually. I don't think I will be able to show you the specs of the charger. Let me try again to turn off the light. Um, yeah, so now it's too much. Okay, never mind. So basically the charger itself, uh, it is good, but it only gives you uh, 5 volts, 3 amps or 9 volts and 2 amps, uh, which is good, but it's not too much. I still prefer my own charger that I actually uh, bought, uh, I don't know, about a year ago, I think. Uh, this is a rough power charger. I'll give uh, a link in the description of this video where you can purchase it. Uh, and I also will uh, give a link to a video. Uh, it should be on a card pretty much here, I think. Uh, on that video, I'll basically show this charger. Now, the good thing about the charger, first of all, uh, it can charge my laptop as well. And it has USB type A and USB type C. Now, let me try, I'm not really sure, but the specs here I think will be more visible to the camera. Okay, I think you can see it. So basically, uh, first of all, this is a 36 watt. Now, the original uh, charger of a Pixel, it's about 18 watt, I think. This one is 36 watts. It's freaking awesome. And not only that, it actually is power delivery. Yay! So basically, we have an output of 5 volts, 3 amperes, 9 volts, 2 amperes, like the original Pixel 2 XL charger. But we also have 15 volts, 2 amperes, and 20 volts, and 1.5 ampere. So that's really amazing. The charger is very small, so let me compare just the chargers for a moment. Obviously, uh, this charger is bigger than the original Pixel 2, but, you know, just a slight, not too much. It's not that heavy, actually. You know what, it is twice heavier maybe than this one, but uh, consider this. Uh, I have a laptop, which always with me, and this charger is also always with me. Now, instead of the original charger of my laptop, Plus, this charger, I only use this one with only one cable, because they are both Type-C. Now, this is regarding the charger. Now, not one thing that if you have older chargers that support quick charge, they will charge fast your phone, but the phone doesn't support quick charge. So, don't expect anything, uh, you know, uh, any amazing speed. Now, if you somehow have already a quick charge 4 charger, I assume you don't. They pretty much don't exist yet. But if you do, uh, it will support this phone because Quick Charge 4 also supports power delivery. Now I also want to talk about cables. There is a whole issue, I would say, with USB Type-A to USB-C cables. So I did uh, put a note on my last video when I tried to unlock the phone, to unlock the bootloader, that not all the cables are working. And this is because I had low quality cables, which I used accidentally without actually knowing, that they do not have a 56 kilo ohm resistor inside. So basically what happens is that if it's a USB Type-C to USB Type-C, it can always deliver 3 amps and 5 volts. Basically, you can deliver 3 amps on a USB-C to USB-C uh, cable. But on USB-A to USB-C, it's not always that. And the cable basically uh, needs to tell the charger what it is and the charger will know what to deliver. So basically when you're using a USB Type-A to USB-C like this one, this is from the Nexus 6P actually, it's working, it's good, uh, and it does have somewhere inside, now obviously I'm not going to open it, a very small resistor that uh, basically allows it to both charge and connect to the computer as file transfer. So keep in mind that if your cable doesn't work, just buy a higher quality cable, uh, you can buy the low quality actually, you can go to AliExpress and buy the cheapest cable, but make a note that it does have a 56 kilo ohm resistor inside. Uh, they usually uh, write it in big letters, in big, I don't know, photos, because it's something that now people uh, notice, and even cheap cables with that thing uh, are okay. You can use them basically. Obviously they are cheap, so don't think that they will be too good but uh, they will work if they have a 56 kilo ohm uh, resistor. 
Now I want to talk about the camera. So the camera is very good. Uh, the portrait mode is good. Everything is pretty well. Uh, as you can see, it actually works. I can focus. Well, I did focus on my uh, light, but if I focus on me, you see that it focuses pretty well. This is the front facing camera and I'm standing pretty far, I would say. Uh, but it works pretty well. The camera is even better. Uh, everything works great uh, in low light performance. Amazing. Actually, I didn't think that there was one photo that I took and I thought I will see only black and some, I don't know, lights from a house. But I actually saw all the picture and it was very bright and very good. So that's amazing. Now sadly, one sad thing, this camera on this phone doesn't have manual mode. It's really sad that they don't add it in the main camera app. But you can download other apps. I did uh, actually download one that works. It has manual uh, mode, but I don't use it in the end because this camera is pretty good. Now, one thing I want to show you, actually, I saw it on one video. If you want to flip between the front camera and the back camera, you don't have to press here. You can also do it like this. Basically, you shake it twice and that's it. You're flipped. And again. And you're flipped again. So that's an amazing thing uh, that I didn't know until recently, but it works pretty well, as you can see. So basically in the end, the phone is pretty good. I really like it. Uh, the sound quality is great on the speakers. Uh, regarding uh, the headphones, I actually use Bluetooth, so I don't mind that there is no headphone jack, but yeah, it would be good if it had one. But doesn't really matter for me. Uh, the sound obviously works fine on Bluetooth. Nothing changed for me. Although that one supports Bluetooth 5, so uh, it should support uh, better things, better devices, better ranges, but uh, it doesn't matter because my headphones currently don't. In terms of performance, so it has 4 uh, GB of RAM, uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, 6 uh, inch screen display, and the camera I think it's 60 megapixels, the back one, and the front I think 8. To be honest, the specs. They don't really matter, I mean, seriously, I mean, it does matter, obviously. You do want the high specs always, but this phone is amazing enough. And to be honest, if I look back on my Nexus 6P, if you remember I had the bootloop issue and I have only four cores running on it, the performance is good enough even with four cores. I had here only three gigs of RAM, good enough for me. Actually, two gigs are enough for me as well. I don't know, I don't use too many things at once. Probably front-facing speakers are very important for me, so that's one of the main reasons why I chose uh, the Pixel 2 XL and not the LG V30. But again, I also really love that Google makes the device and the Android is clear and you should receive first the updates. And suddenly, for some reason, I'm now on the beta. I have the 8.1 and I still didn't get the updates from last Tuesday of the security patches with the color uh, settings. So there are new color settings that you can uh, change. So if you don't like the colors on the Pixel 2 XL, that they are looking, I don't know, dull or something, you can change it to be more colorful and work uh, kind of better. By the way, here you can see most of the colors. Now, uh, to be honest, this one is actually blue. And on the camera, as far as it looks, it looks a little bit purple. Don't mind, it's just the camera, it's actually blue, and for me it looks very good. I don't have any issue with the colors, seriously, it looks very good. And when I look on our phones, I don't know, it looks fine to me as well. So, I don't know, maybe uh, I will use the saturated mode when uh, the update will finally come to me, unless I will install it manually, uh, which I don't want uh, in the current moment, but I might do that in the future. So again, to sum up, this is a high quality phone, no matter what they say about the screen. Seriously, I think they over talked about it. I don't know, for me, everything is fine. Uh, for some people, uh, it isn't that fine, I know. Uh, hope you can uh, figure it out. Uh, many things are being figured by the software. So as you can see, uh, the navigation buttons uh, they are going a little bit, you know, like darkish. Uh, so when you're not using them, they're less burning in the screen. But I don't know, I've been using it for about, I don't know, three weeks or so. No burning, no issues. I hope that it will continue that way. 
Now you know what, I want to do a final test before I finish this video. So let's, let's try to use the brightness. So let's try the lowest brightness. So this is the lowest brightness as, uh, as you can see on the camera. And let me go to the highest brightness just so you'll see how bright the screen can go. This is the brightest thing. So uh, the camera is fully on manual, so there is no changing in colors or anything. Uh, and as you can see, it goes pretty wild with those colors. Now let's, if you will go actually to the lowest, I think you can see the colors very good. Actually, yeah, on this brightness level, you can actually see the blue pretty much normally. Uh, the black, well, I think you can see it totally disabled in that area. Uh, I prefer this. So in terms of the uh, pixel itself, uh, this is the black version. There is the panda version, which uh, I actually didn't like, to be honest. Uh, what I did like is the orange button, uh, which I thought maybe to order just a dbrand orange button. As you can see, I'm wearing orange t-shirt as well, but I won't do that. Uh, it's not that important. So that's pretty much it about this device. I hope you like the review. If you have any questions or any comments or anything, don't hesitate and ask me in the comments or on any social media. I'll try to answer to everyone. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one.